Well, hello. Welcome to Let's Get Writing. I'm your host, Katherine Taylor. This show is all about the writing process from creation to publication. Here is where you can find inspiration, ideas, and meet the people behind the stories. We bring life to books. That's how I like to think about it. Now, you can find me on Facebook and YouTube. If there are some shows you'd like to catch that you haven't seen, just check out Katherine Taylor TV. Now, hold fast for today's interview, and that's a hint, by the way. Today, my guest is well-known to most people. He is the author of more than 20 books for both young people and adults. He has won numerous awards in Canada, too many for me to list, but they are going to be in his biography below. And his work has also been translated into many languages. So how cool is that? Well, I want you to meet my guest. <laughs> I'm going to bring him on screen. Meet Kevin Major. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> hey, good to be here. Oh, it's wonderful to have you here. I love featuring writers from Newfoundland. And uh, just in case people don't realize that, we are here in Newfoundland. I'm in central Newfoundland in Grand Falls, Windsor. And Kevin, you are <laughs> in St. <In> John's. In <laughs> Bright and sunny today. Cold, but bright and sunny. <laughs> Very much like here. And, and we take a bad rap for our weather. I think people think the sun doesn't shine here at all, but it does. Yeah, absolutely. And Kevin, it shines most in our hearts. <laughs> We're wonderful <laughs> people. <laughs> I vouch for that. <laughs> I would think so with all your writing. You have been in the business of being a writer for so many years. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but for <laughs> all, don't, I don't want to start this on the wrong note. No. Um, right. But how did it feel, you know, when you started out um, with, with nothing, mm -hmm. really? You know, your first. Well, book. you know, it, there are a number of years and I don't like to count them up either necessarily. But I started out um, in university, actually intending to become a doctor and a little bit far away from the idea of being a writer. Uh, but, you know, I grew up in the west coast of Newfoundland. I never encountered writers. I, you know, such a channel such as this never existed, for example. So I, I really didn't know what it took to be a writer, although I had an interest in, in writing. And, of course, I love to read. Uh, I spent three years at university doing pre-med. I was accepted for medical school, but in the back of my mind was the idea, at least I'd like to try to write and seek up to see if I could get it to work, see if I could get a book published, basically. So I took a year away from university, I did some traveling, came back and switched faculties, dropped the idea of going to med school and became a teacher. And in my spare time, I started to write seriously. The first effort mm, didn't get anywhere. Some encouraging comments, but nobody really wanted to publish it. But the second time around, I wrote the book that you're referring to today, Hold Fast. And it was published in 1978. So it's, you know, if I hadn't been able to get published, obviously I would have gone on to do something else. But it was encouragement. Uh, I wasn't making a great deal of money from it, certainly not enough to quit my job. So I continued to substitute teach for a while wrote some other books and eventually gave up that extra job and for the last 30 years or so i've been able to make a living uh, as a writer with the great support of my wife who had a permanent job i might say <laughs> it does help doesn't it i say i bet your parents cried when you told them you were switching out of medicine and go, <laughs> you were going to be a writer Oh, my. But, um, you know, it can be a challenging profession because a lot of people think, oh, you write a book, it's going to be a bestseller, mm -hmm. it'll be a movie, yeah. going to have it made. I mean, the reality is not that. The reality is... No, the reality is not that, generally. I mean, you do hear the exceptions and you hear of the Stephen Kings of the world, which you would, you know, you'd like to sell in those numbers, but the vast majority of writers don't. Um, and it's only, in my case, with the buildup of a number of books that uh, over a period of time and, you know, things like grants from the Canada Council or whatever that, uh, and a, a, a couple of, of uh, movie deals that ended up bringing in some money that I was able to make a living from it. So 
it's a it's a it's a struggle but it's you know in my case it was something i really wanted to do i i didn't really want to go through life wondering what would have happened if uh, i said i'll give it a try and if it works it works if it doesn't at least i will know mm -hmm. and i and i and i think i've often said to to my kids you know follow what is your passion don't follow mm -hmm. what you think your mother thinks you should do you're going to have to do right. what you want to do and i think that's where we can express ourselves and perhaps why you have 20 books and you you've had so much success you've had awards and mm -hmm. and uh, i go back to hold fast which was the movie and uh, now they say hold fast newfoundland and labrador through covid <laughs> like that phrase i'm almost thinking when i think of you that that must have been your motto through through life, hold fast. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, because you, the writing is ups and downs. I mean, first of all, you got to contend with reviews, and reviews are not always positive. Uh, you tend to focus on the positive ones, but even a book like Hold Fast got a, a, a review in the Globe and Mail that I particularly <laughs> didn't particularly enjoy. Um, but you know, as opposed to that, then it went on to win some awards. So you know, you take the good with the bad and you strive through and you retain i think most of all a belief in yourself as a writer uh and you go to it knowing not everybody's going to enjoy everything you write you know people have specific interests in in the books that they take time to read and mine may well not appeal to them that's fine i can deal with that uh no writer thinks that uh you know he's going to write the, the book that everybody wants to read so you you build and you make a life for yourself as a writer and you get into a you get into a routine i guess and you make every book in my case a little bit new and different and there's a challenge with 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 each of them and because i write or have written books for a variety of age groups from young children all the way to adults uh, you know each each book has its approach and its and its challenges and its audience too well, you know, I wanted to ask you about that because there are so many different books and, and I've, mm -hmm. I've read, I haven't read all of your books, but I've read quite a few and I'm definitely going to read more. But what I found was that, for example, when I was reading uh, this one here, New Under the, the Sun, there we mm -hmm. go, um, yeah. you know, that was so much history and, and, mm -hmm. and then I got reading your newer books and you know, there's so much variety in what you wrote. Like, was that on purpose or was that where your interest was at the time? Mm -hmm. I like the challenge of, I honestly say, I like the challenge of doing something, trying something different with each book. Now, I had to qualify that because I've written a book, started a series of books of murder mysteries, and I had never up to this point, up to this past year, written a sequel to any of the books that I've written. I've been asked to. But I never have. And um, so, you know, I approach each book as something that I want to do at a particular point in time. Um, I was writing historical novels for a number of years because I had written a nonfiction history of Newfoundland and Labrador. And I thought, oh, yeah, there's stories that really need to be fleshed out and made into novels and so on. And then it, my wife said to me one day, you know, you have a really good sense of humor. Your, bo your books, recent books don't really reflect that. Um, you occasionally enjoy murder mysteries. Have you thought of writing a, you know, a, a detective story, a crime novel with a little bit of a sense of humor? And I said, oh, let's, let me give this a try. And so One for the Rock was the first effort. And then just last year came out two for the tab table lands Got them and, <laughs> and uh, oh maybe oh yesterday or day before i completed the first draft of the third one which is due out this fall so well i'm so glad to hear that and i really want to thank your wife <laughs> for <laughs> suggesting that i just i'm such a fan of that type of literature and i read the the books <laughs> the two new ones and Sebastian Sinard, is that the correct yeah, pronunciation? I, I, in Newfoundland, you know, people pronounce it Sinard. Sinard. Is, yeah, yeah, which is a bit, bit rougher, and it kind of, kind of goes with his personality. Yeah, well, <laughs> and I'm sure they call him Sebastian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which
which he doesn't much care for his name, but I look, I loved the humor in those books and that kind of wit. And I thought, I said to myself, man, this is the perfect ex-husband, this guy. <laughs> he's like, he's like a walking, uh, I don't know, just things happen to him and, and you'd never wish you were still with him, but you'd certainly enjoy still knowing him. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know yeah, what you he, think of he, that. He has, he, has, <laughs> he, he has his faults, uh, of course, and you know he, as people tend to do, they probably overlook their own faults uh, and and flaws and so on. But he, he he's a, he's a kind of pretty neat character in a way, and I I do share. Uh, my wife says I'm a lot like him. Well, mm. we share some. I'm I'm happily married, and he's <laughs> divorced, so that's one different. <laughs> Um, but it, you know, he has that kind of offbeat sense of humor and he likes scotch, which I do as well. And, you know, he has, he has one son I had two. So it, there, there are some similarities. So I was maybe in some measure, not, not totally some measure drawing on my own experience, life experiences. But of course, I think that's something that to some degree, all writers do it. It, it, it slips in there. I mean, it's kind of your sensations of what you know or what you've lived through or what you've mm. experienced. I don't know how that could ever be totally absent from writing. Mm. Do you yeah. agree with me or? Oh, a absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you have to draw on, on what you know, uh, and you're, or in case of historical novels, you're, you're doing a lot of research, but again, you're still drawing on your, your knowledge of relationships and your own, situation and your observance of the life around you. I see Absolutely. we have one person, one person watching from Scotland. Hi, Kathy. Oh, we do. I've got to, let me just see here. Oh, Kathy gone. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> if you have a question, <laughs> Scotland, of course, Scotland would be tuning in. <laughs> That's right. For the, the Scotch vibe, right? <laughs> there you go. And I told you, you weren't allowed to have any on, on, on this interview. <laughs> <laughs> You have to have it when you get off. Anyway, right. yeah. Only water only. There you go. And I left mine uh, in the other room, so you're on your own. <laughs> Kevin, <laughs> having had such a long career, what have you seen, you know, evolve? You know, when you started out, you were you were not surrounded by all the authors that we see now in Newfoundland. Yeah. But what's your take on things? And and as it as it as it evolved over the years? Yeah, they the, well, the as, yeah. you, as you mentioned, I mean, when I started out, and, and the first book was published in 1978, uh, ooh, there were maybe, you count the number of Newfoundland writers on, on one hand and, and probably not use all the fingers at that. <laughs> but, um, you know, things have just blossomed so much as it is done in the other arts in Newfoundland, theater, music, uh, you know, um, all, all aspects of visual arts as well. Um, so it's just, I mean, it's just really pleasant to see, uh, the, the profu profusion of writers and, and taking the national stage as well as the provincial stage, uh, you know, obviously, um, people like Michael Crummy and, uh, and Megan Coles, you know, any number of, of writers have launched themselves and become really center stage in the in the Canadian writing scene and and worldwide too so uh you know they've kind of over subsumed me I like to say and and I I had my time in the sun I like to to think and now other people are are, are going into the forefront and that's just it, it makes for a really healthy writing community and you know people growing up today don't think like I did when I started out saying, you know, how does a writer go about, is there such a thing as being able to be a Newfoundlander and being able to publish a book? You know, people don't think in those terms anymore, which is a, a, a real ad, a advantage, of course. Well, we have some, you know, very robust publishing houses here in Newfoundland, which is, you know, Absolutely. for a small province. They're putting out yeah. some wonderful books, and I know that firsthand because they're sharing them with me, and I'm getting to interview yeah. a lot of the authors. When I conceived this show, I imagine, you know, I'll have a, I don't know, half, half a dozen, maybe a dozen shows. <laughs> like, this is mm -hmm. like over 50. 
And most of them, a large number of them, are Newf Newfoundland authors right, yeah. um, or roots leading back to Newfoundland. So it, it's pretty amazing, and there doesn't seem to be any end to it. No, no. Well, it's a very fertile place to, to be writing about or setting your, your stories in. You know, I, I never wake up in the morning thinking, uh, where will I set my next story? Because there's just so much territory I haven't <laughs> uncovered as yet. And that was part of going back to the this mm -hmm. present series of uh, mystery novels. My idea when developing it into a series was, well, uh, Sebastian is, a, first of all, a tour guide. So this is going to allow me to take my audience to different parts of Newfoundland and Labrador in his function as a tour guide. Uh, you know, on, on the other level, he's a private investigator. So that that helps as well. So I think in the course of the of the books, I'm going to take the audience to different parts of uh, of this province of Newfoundland and and into Labrador, and you know, give them a taste. I think that's part of what I'm all about in these books is is that I love this province so much, and it's so varied and so full of history and interesting people. That let's explore different parts of it. Yeah, well, that, yeah, it sounds wonderful. Through the format of a murder <laughs> to make it interesting. Yeah, well, I'm glad that life is not truly that exciting here, but uh, <laughs> but but it does lend itself to so much possibility, such as Sebastian launching himself over a cliff. I'll say no more. <laughs> and of or, course, he survives. <laughs> or walking the table. Yes, you better survive. <laughs> Or walking the tablelands and discovering somebody mm -hmm. half buried in the rocks. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's it's pretty amazing. So I can't wait to uh, to read those other books. I'm glad that the third one's on its way soon. And don't mm. stop writing. <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's just wonderful. But going back to uh, delving into a little bit, you like you like your scotch. I have not a clue about that. So. I can't, I can't okay. ask you anything intelligent, but I'm sure you could tell me lots. But you've also done some tour guiding. And in my delving around, I saw that you had been part of adventure adventure tours, I think. Adventure Canada. Yeah. Canada, yeah. What was, uh, what was that uh, well, about? Well, Adventure Canada Adventure Canada is a Canadian company, and they do small uh, boat tours. By small, I mean maybe 200 passengers. Um, and do it in various parts of Canada and other other places as well. They do, for example, the cir circumnavigation of Ireland. They go to the outer islands of Scotland. They sometimes go to Antarctica, but they're best known probably for their Arctic tours in Canada. But they also do a circumnavigation of Newfoundland. So they board the ship in St. John's with me aboard and several other resource staff and take 10 days and and go around the island stopping each day at some particular point you know maybe somewhere in trinity bay lansa meadows obviously uh gross morn all the way around hitting the highlights but also some wilderness stops as well and so you're seeing newfoundland from the perspective of the ocean which not everybody gets the chance to 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 do and so I go on, as I said, as a historian, because I've written the history of Newfoundland and Labrador, and talk to the passengers about the history of this place, take time to answer their questions, go ashore with them, and point out different features of the province. So it's a, it's a fun experience and, and fun with, and, and, and able to be enjoyed with the other members of the resource staff, like a geologist, ornithologist, archaeologist, historian. <laughs> wow. Well, that, that, that sounds amazing. And I'm, I'm assuming right now that they're probably not offering the, the cruises yet, but I hope that no. they do bring those back soon. Yeah. They had to cancel the last two seasons, of course, because they're, first of all, they're prohibited in going into Arctic waters and it's just not feasible for craft for uh, cruise ships to operate now, but hopefully they'll be back next year. They certainly plan to be. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed. And what a, a what a great place to, what a great place for a murder. Just, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. <laughs> well, I have, to, I, I have to say this has already been done because uh, <laughs> um, Margaret Atwood had been on one of the trips and she wrote a short story 
<laughs> oh well, but she, but but she, you <laughs> haven't done it. <laughs> Sebastian hasn't done it. Yeah. Kevin, what advice? I mean, part of what I like to include in this show is is information for people who have maybe are out there longing to write a book or wishing to write a book. Mm -hmm. What kind of advice would you give to someone like that? Well, if you're determined to do it, and I think it has to have a determination. I mean, this people say all the time, uh, you know, I think I'll, one day I'll write a book. And uh, Margaret Lawrence had a great line. Uh, somebody said to her, I think one day I'll write a book. And she said, I think one day I'll be a brain surgeon. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so it means getting down to it and applying yourself to it. You may have other things. You got a day job, probably, uh, but you find time to do it. You carve out a certain number of hours per day uh, as best you can and start in and write. You know, take some time perhaps to develop with the storyline that you're considering. Maybe even start out with some short stories and try to get them published, as a lot of writers do. But make that time, stick with it, and, you know, I find if I write a page a day before the end of the year, I have a manuscript. Uh, and then I can take time to rework that. So I, for example, I like getting up really early in the morning. By that, by that I mean like 5 o'clock. And that's my best time to work, um, kind of, you know, 5 to 8.30 or 9. The uh, house is quiet, uh, nobody around, and I can really concentrate. So find that time. I'm, I'm, I'm a morning person. I'm, by evening, I'm just too tired to be able to concentrate. So doesn't, that doesn't work for me. Uh, but carve out the time to do it. Get it done. It might take a couple of years, may take longer. And then you have something to work with and then, you know, see what publishers are that, that might be interested in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, they are approachable. I, last week I had um, Jerry Cranford on and uh, mm -hmm. with Flanker and, you know, it's on their web pages and they are always looking for new voices. So, you oh, have to ask. Absolutely. You know, um, there's always new people that on the scene. I'm amazed at the number of books that actually are published by, you're talking about specifically about Newfoundland publishers each year. I mean, they run into the dozens. So uh, there's a, certainly an a interest out there. There's a, there's a market for it. And uh, there's an interest on the part of publishers from hearing from new people. Yeah, and actually your most recent books were uh, published by uh, Breakwater Books. Again, another right. fantastic yeah. yeah, another fantastic publisher. When you were when you were starting out similar to kind of that situation we just talked about, was there anyone who influenced you or any experience you had that you know that really helped you? Um I think I can think of one particular incident that that kind of stands out in my mind. Uh when I graduated from high school, uh, it was the same year that a, a, a Newfoundlander, his name was Harold Horwood, he's passed away now. Uh, he, he, was, um, he worked in government actually as well, but he wrote a book called Tomorrow Will Be Sunday. It's, it was a novel set in Newfoundland that was published in New York. And I heard about it and I thought, wow, there's somebody here, you know, living in the same province that I, that I am. Uh, who's written a novel and is published by a double day in New York. And I thought, wow, this is, this is encouragement. And when I was in university, the, I think it was the second year I was there, Harold Horwood came and gave a lecture to a public lecture and I went to it. And from that, I, I, I got a lot of, of encouragement. Um, you know, there were other people writing at the time. I think people like Helen Porter, for example, uh, one of our our, our great uh, writers from the, from that earlier days, and um, these people became inspiration, I think, because they showed it could be done. Um, and I think, in the same way that they encourage me, I think I encourage. I remember Michael Crummer saying because I I happened to be in a school in Labrador where Mike when Michael was in high school, 
and he was in the class unbeknownst to me you know i i didn't know about this till after the fact and he said you know kevin uh, you show that it could be done that you could be a writer so that then i think and i and i think people like michael are encouraging other people now to 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 show that it can be done yeah and and that, that you know that moment in time just when you can possibly make that comment it can go a long way to encouraging someone mm -hmm. because as you said it's a profession sometimes of rejection and it yeah. can you know it can be yeah yeah i mean as i said the first novel that i wrote uh, was rejected. It was rejected by, you know, half a dozen publishers. And in the end, I shelved it. I'm very glad I did because it wasn't great. <laughs> it wasn't great. Um, but it was a step along the way, you know. And I remember uh, one of the publishers saying, we don't think this is worthy of publication, but we think you have some talent as a writer, so stick with it. And we'd love <laughs> to see another book. So that, you know, that was probably the encouragement I needed. Well, you know, we're so absolutely grateful that you did stick with it. And, and Kevin, we've, we're just coming to the end of our time together, which is not nearly long enough. And, and, <laughs> and I could stay here and talk to you forever. But for those of you who are watching, we are going to hop over on, uh, actually on this, still on this same platform, we'll be on um, Facebook. And uh, Kevin's going to do some reading, and we'll chat a little more about that after. And I just noticed Samantha Fitzpatrick asked, uh, do you think Sebastian <laughs> will ever venture off island into Labrador? So very quickly, Kevin, yes, no, who knows? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> At some point, absolutely. <laughs> that sounds positive, and thank you for Samantha for asking that. And uh, so again, Kevin, thank you so much for the time today, and I think your words of inspiration for other authors and writers will be tremendous. And uh, you know, keep writing. Actually, I've got to just share this uh, before we go and show people just some of your books there. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's just a few. So, Kevin, how about we get our um, how about you get your reading hat on and I'll meet you again in a few minutes. Okay. Thanks okay. so much. It's totally enjoyable. Oh, thank you. And folks, again, if you would like to see more interviews from wonderful people like Kevin and Kevin's interview, it's going to be on my YouTube channel at Katherine Taylor TV. And thanks for joining us here on Let's Get Writing. Bye now. Bye. Bye-bye.